Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're looking at how we can loop animation by resetting our dynamics back to its original position. This tutorial was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Pro Membership, where members get access to Cinema 4D, Octane and Redshift courses, project files, models, materials, discounts, and even a private Facebook group, as well as lots more. Become a member today and take your Cinema 4D skills to the next level. Visit cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So in our scene here, we've got a bunch of clone spheres, which if we grab the cloner has been set to honeycomb mode, which gives us this lovely pattern. Then below that, I've used that same pattern to cut holes out of a cube. So our clones have somewhere to sit. And above everything, we have a lonely sphere that I want to use as an attractor to attract all the clones to this position before they return back to their original starting positions. So let's set things up, shall we? We'll start by adding a cloth tag to our cloner to make our clones dynamic. And to attract our clones to the sphere, let's grab that and add an attractor. And if we hold shift when we bring this in, it'll become a child of that sphere and be placed right in the center of it, like so. So let's see what happens if we hit play. The dynamics takes over and the clones just fall straight down with gravity. So the fact that they're not being attracted to the sphere probably means that we need to increase the strength of our attractor. It's at 10 by default, but let's crank this right up to a million. And this value will depend on your scene scale. Our spheres are only 10 centimeters in diameter, so it's a pretty small scale. Let's see if that has any effect. And it definitely does. It's attracting the spheres now, but I think everything's moving a bit too fast. They all came together in less than 11 frames. So let's put a speed limit on the attraction by decreasing this to 20. And we'll try that. Okay, I think that looks good. But our spheres are flying through the base here. So we'll need to grab that as well and add a cloth collider tag and play that. That's better. But I also don't like how the clones are collapsing in on each other. Let's see if we can make them a bit more rigid. So I'll grab the cloth tag and tweak the surface settings. Firstly, the bendiness is probably the main culprit. So if we set this to zero, it should stop the mesh from bending and behaving like cloth. So let's try that. And they're definitely holding their shape a bit better now, but we could probably make them even more rigid by increasing their mass as well. Let's bring this up to three and play that. And I think these are looking nice and firm now, but it looks like we've got a deserter down here. And I think with the extra mass, he's just getting caught on the base now. So if we grab the collision tag on there, we could probably fix that by setting the bounce and friction to zero. And we'll try that. And there he goes. So that's the main simulation all set up. So the next step is getting all the clones to return back to their starting positions from this point. And that's actually super easy to do back in our cloth tag over in the mix animation tab, where we can blend the simulation with our animation or starting positions. All we need to do is activate with force mode and we'll set this at zero to begin with, which should have no effect at first. But if we start to increase this value, they'll try to return back to their original positions. And a little goes a long way with this, so we don't want to go too crazy. But basically, all we need to do is animate this value at the point we want the clones to return home. So let's set this back at zero and play this through to where they're all huddled together at about frame 40, where we'll keyframe this at zero. Then if we go ahead to maybe the final frame, let's try keyframing this at 100. And we'll see what that gives us. So they all clump back together at the attractor. And when we get to that keyframe, they quickly move back into place, which is essentially the completed effect. But we can actually tweak this to make it look even better. Rather than having all the clones rush back into place together at the same time, we can actually offset the animation so the spheres at the bottom return first, then the rest gradually peel off from the bottom, which should hopefully look a bit more interesting. So let's remove the keyframed animation on here. 
And we'll try controlling this with a map instead. So we'll need a map first. So let's grab our cloner again and we'll give it a vertex map, which gives us this map tag and also turns all of our clones red, which doesn't do too much for us yet. But if we click on the vertex map tag, we can choose to drive this with fields. So we can give the effect some fall off by adding a linear field, for example, which now gives us a visual representation of the fall off, which goes from yellow, which basically means fully off, transitioning to red, which means fully on. So we can use this gradient to turn the effect of our mix animation on and off. But first I just wanna change the direction of this so we can affect our cluster of spheres from bottom to top. So I'll change the direction to positive Y down here. And I'll also make the transition a bit shorter by decreasing the length of our linear field. And if we now play this through, we can grab our linear field and slowly move it through the cluster, which will allow us to pick which clones will be affected by our mix animation and transition them back into place. But for that to work, we still need to link our vertex map up to the cloth tag. So I'll just need to grab that and drag it into the map slot in our mix animation. And we'll also need to give it a strength value, which will be applied to the spheres as they turn red. So let's use a lower value like 15 this time, because I don't think we need it to go all the way up to 100. So let's just do a test first. I'll grab the linear field and we'll play this again. And now hopefully as I drag this up through the spheres, the mix animation will kick in and they'll return in order from the bottom. So the system works. We just need to keyframe this now. Let's put this back below the spheres again. And I might just switch to the front view. We'll start this below everything. Then if we play through to where they all gather together, we can set a keyframe in this position. So back in our linear field over in coordinates, Let's keyframe this here, which is the Y axis. Then we'll go ahead to about frame 60, where we'll move this up through all the clones. Where if we take a look at our perspective view and select the vertex map, you can see that all the clones have now turned red. So they'll be affected by the mix animation. So we can now keyframe that position back in the linear field as well. And if I go back to our other view here and play that, the clones all group together. Then as our linear field moves through them, they all return back to their original positions. And that is pretty much it for this effect. If you do find any of your clones are behaving strangely or getting stuck again, you can also hit Control D to bring up the project settings. And under simulation, you could try increasing the sub steps to get a more accurate simulation. And that tends to fix most issues but I think I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. I'll leave a link down below to where you can grab this exact project file, or if you need the Redshift lighting and materials, you can grab the render ready project files from both of our example renders from our website, cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next, or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets and resources on our website cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content. That's it for now, here's a few more videos you might like.